That's Madness from Madness on Revenge of the 80s Radio. Dan Woody Woodgate, the band's drummer, also the drummer for Voice of the Beehive, has a new album out. His first solo project, He's With Me Now. Welcome to Revenge of the 80s Radio, Woody. Hi, Chris. Good. Nice to be here. I'm very happy to have you here, too. Your new album, In Your Mind, is out. It features some excellent horns, a bit of ska influence, which is probably expected, and a lot of classic 70s pop flavor. We're going to talk about that in a little bit as we continue our conversation. But first, you came from a very musical family, so tell us about them and, and when you started taking a liking to the drums. Well, my liking to the drums simply came from my brother, Nick, who uh, was my younger brother, and he was a, a child prodigy, he could play everything, guitar, piano, and it was my uh, way of joining in with him. I, I wasn't very good at playing any instrument, so I started bashing away on stools and bits of furniture with sticks and joined in, and then I bought a drum kit. Uh, it was just everything that Nick and I did, we did together. We were very close brothers, so um, it was uh, his influence on me, really, that made me... Playing for ten, all musical really. Granddad's both uh, conductors for various variety acts and the BBC choral singers, and um, it was anyone that went back in the family history were musicians somehow. So um, it was. Uh, not really expected of us, but we, we couldn't really help ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I guess having that musical family sort of got you into the family business. But when did you realize you wanted to become a full-time skinsman? Well, it was, um, it was either being a drummer or being an artist, because I was, I was quite good with uh, drawing and painting. But um, it was just the, the, the sheer luck of... Um, Finding a band uh, that I was, you know, that, that wanted me and, and ended up being quite successful. That was that was the Invaders. I mean, I had a band with my brother in the early days, in my school days, and everyone seemed to like that group that that, I, that we were in. Um, and it was it wasn't really a decision, you know, this is what I'm going to do. It was it, it it decided for me really. I didn't really have a lot of choice. I joined the band like a lot of people do, and before I knew it. We were very successful and performing on British uh, television programs like Top of the Pops and, uh, you know, jetting off to America where we played New York and Los Angeles in the early days and uh, supported bands like, well, no, the Go-Go's supported us uh, in our early days. So um, it, it, was a, it, was a, it, was, it wasn't really a choice of mine. It just happened. <laughs> Well, you can't forget those two appearances on The Young Ones, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that was, um, there were some uh, young writers, uh, Richard Curtis and Ben Elton were two young writers that uh, uh, had managed to get a, a comedy program together and invited us on the show. No one knew that The Young Ones were going to do so well. But, uh, you know, it was uh, pioneering comedy. It was really good. It was, it was nice to be a part of it. And you were the only band that was on twice, by the way. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they, obviously, uh, they quite liked us. So, uh, <laughs> and we were very lucky as well, because um, although it's not, it's never, it never, hap never came off, um, nothing came of it. Um, Richard Curtis and Ben Elton wrote a series for Madness that were... Um, that uh, we we put to the BBC to do, so it was a an offshoot of the young ones uh, for us. And um, I suppose it's they they could see that that you know they they just liked the band and they could see the comedy value from seven mad North London boys getting together. But uh, nothing came of it. But um, I suppose. Those writers particularly liked us, so um, that's maybe why we went on the show twice. Who knows? <laughs> that would have been very interesting. Madness with its own television show on the BBC. I guess they were inspired by that fight scene after you did Our House on uh, on the Young Ones. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was mad. The uh, street riot. Yeah, that was that was really good fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, you know, what do I say? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you meet those guys anyway? How did you hook up with Madness? They were, we were just, we knew all the musicians uh, around all the schools in the area. It was mainly to do with parties and girls and girlfriends and boyfriends of, you know, various people. 
Um, it was, uh, you know, when, you're, when you live in North London, there are lots of schools and everyone seems to know each other. It's not, it's not a, a very large area. And um, you eventually end up playing with, with um, most of the musicians around. And uh, I, was a, I was a friend of Mark Bedford, the bass player um, of Madness. And uh, he, he all of a sudden came, he appeared at uh, a school dance, William Ellis School dance, um, in a band called The Invaders. And... Uh, I've never heard or seen any of these chaps before. They were totally new to me, um, apart from Mark and the drummer Gary, who I did know. And um, it was, uh, it was, they were great. They, they were terrible musicians, but <laughs> <laughs> they had something. They had something very special about them. So um, uh, soon, soon after I saw them play there, Gary left the band, and um, I rang up Mark and asked if. Um, he wouldn't mind trying me out because I just thought they were, they, they, there was something about them that intrigued me. And um, so I went along and that was it really. I mean, it was bed as I knew and the rest were from another world. I think it was mainly because they were older than Mark and I um, and had already left school and, we'd, you know, got jobs. So um, uh, I didn't really know any of them. It was a, it was a kind of strange world. I ventured into. Woody Woodgate is with me on Revenge of the 80s Radio. Let's take it back a couple of moments, Woody. You're saying that at one point, the guys from Madness were terrible musicians? Uh, They they developed pretty well. Well, (laughs) yeah, they were learning, you know. I mean, Mike Barson was never a terrible musician. That was a a terrible thing to say. But um, uh, uh, Chris had only just learned to play the guitar, and Lee uh, had only just learned to play the saxophone. So, you know, we remember we were very young kids, really, you know, in our, in our teens. And um, the band was yet to develop, but um, they, soon, they soon got good, believe me. Maybe there's hope for me yet. <laughs> there's hope for everyone. <laughs> Just keep practicing. There you go. So remember that, kids out there, keep practicing. You never know if you're going to have a legendary band. And I have to tell you, Madness really became timeless after a while. And, and you're in demand. You could just go to one of the O2 theaters and fill it up and inside of weeks. When you guys were starting out, I doubt you thought you could do something like that later on in, in life. No, it was, um, it was only ever um, the, the world of the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and um, you know, the super tramps of the world um, and the Genesis that ever did large, really huge, big concerts. So, um, no, we, we, we only ever played, even in our pomp, in, our, you know, in, our, in the height of our success in the 80s, we only ever played uh, theatres that could hold up to 3,000 people. And that was the biggest shows we ever played. Um, it was only until we, we reformed back in 92, 1992 um, in London in a, at a big festival that we played anything more than, uh, well, we played to 30 odd thousand people a night at a couple of shows and uh, it just it, it took off from there so we were playing the Wembleys and large venues in the middle of um, England like the NEC which is a big place in Birmingham but no we never ever thought we'd ever play play like because we weren't really a, a, a you know a, a big rock band and that's Big venues were only ever played by big rock bands, and we were never a big rock band. <laughs> but um, you know, times have moved on, and and people, the fe- you know, festivals are much better organised, and large venues have really superb PA systems, and it's much better organised. You know, p- people like live gigs these days. You know, it's, um, people don't buy albums; they go to live gigs. Woody, after several great albums and timeless tracks, Madness members went their separate ways. Interestingly enough, shortly after that, Woody, you were called into a band that featured two American singers, Tracy and Missy Belland, also with a music pedigree, to form Voice of the Beehive. Yeah, great band. Really loved them. They, they wrote fantastic um, pop, you know, pop rock songs. You know, they, they, were, a rocking, they were a rocking band. They just needed a, a rhythm section. They needed a bass player and a drummer. And um, I was very, very, very fortunate uh, that... I went from 
you know, thinking my life was over when madness split up, not knowing what to do, straight into what I consider to be, you know, one of one of the best bands around who they just wrote some really fantastic songs. Were uh, really good fun to be with. Didn't take themselves too seriously. Um, enjoyed their music. Were great live. And um, yeah, and no, I had I had about seven years uh, with Voice of the Big Hives. I toured America a lot. It was that was uh, that was brilliant. I, I think I in fact I toured America more with Voice of the Big Hives than I did with Mathis. And I think uh, musically we were much uh, better suited to the American market as well. Um, I like bands with a bit of you know with a bit of rock to them. And Tracy Bellin, the lead singer, spent a lot of time writing those songs several years before Let It Be came out. Yeah, no, she had um, she had uh, a raft of really good songs, um, and uh, she always seemed to, you know, when when we first joined, she she never seemed to be short of some cracking good tunes. So it was a it was a joy, really. With me is Daniel Woody Woodgate of Madness and Voice of the Beehive. Straight ahead, we'll talk about his new album, In Your Mind, and some very important charity work he's been involved in on Revenge of the 80s Radio. I say nothing from Voice of the Beehive on Revenge of the 80s Radio. With me is Daniel Woody Woodgate, the band's drummer, and of course, Madness's drummer with a new solo album. Before we get to that album, Woody, you also had several other projects, something with your brother, a band called Fat, a couple other things going on. Talk about some of the interesting projects and side projects you did after Voice of the Beehive and Madness broke up, and sort of during the time that Madness got back together. Well, it was um, it was kind of... Uh, it was a strange old time after Voice of the Beehive uh, and I parted waves. Um parted ways i should say and madness were getting back together again in the early 90s um because we had the greatest hits out and it just seemed the right time to to move to move on um but madness only ever did shows at christmas time or summer time so i had the rest of the year to to twiddle my thumbs really i was knocking around not really knowing what to do so i was lucky enough to, to form another band called fat which um, was a, a rock rap band. Uh, anyone out there who fancies checking us out, <laughs> there might be some old fat material out there somewhere. But um, that was that was really good fun. And then um, I was always writing um, continually, uh, on and off. Yeah, I've, I've always um, written songs with my brother Nick, and he wrote some songs with me with Madness, and uh, that was very successful. And he started to, to write more and more with me, and uh, so much so that uh, we decided that we'd get together and put out an album of our own. So we had, um, I was uh, lucky enough to put an album out under the guise of the Magic Brothers, uh, which uh, was my, you know, a, bro- a brotherly kind of album that we did a couple of years ago, which was, uh, it was really good fun. And um, from, from that, uh, because... He is um, a schizophrenic. Uh, he's not, you know, he has a, a mental illness. Um, I, I, I linked up with a, a charity called Rethink, which was um, uh, to, you know, promote um, the problems and, you know, joys of living with someone with, uh, uh, you know, schizophrenia. And um, I've just tried to kind of promote the fact that uh, Nick who suffers from schizophrenia, is also a very, very talented musician and can lead a normal life. So, you know, I spent a lot of time um, doing that and it was, you know, very rewarding. And um, then uh, I moved on to <coughs> writing a, an album of my own with the help of my brother again, you know, because he was a co-writer with me. And um, I came up with a Woody Woodgate album, which is all very good, all, all at the same time as writing with madness you know and uh, i don't know what to say really it's uh, it's all just fantastic in your mind is the name of the album woody let's talk about that after all these years what brought you on to putting together your first solo album well um it, it all stemmed from originally writing with my brother nick but because his uh schizophrenia and uh, he found it really hard to get out of the house so i had to make a decision whether or not to um, 
to have an album wh- where Nick sings everything and we can't go on the road and do anything with it, or I, or I break away from my brother and get a, a, a new singer and a, and a band that could go on the road. So with his blessing, uh, because I couldn't do anything without his blessing, um, I found a, uh, a singer, which was very exciting. His name's Dan Shears. An amazing story, really. I, I did some teaching years ago in a school in Hayes, up the road from where I live in Kent, uh, uh, that's in England, for all those who want to look at a map. Um, and he was a student of mine, and he had the most incredible voice. And I, I never forgot this, uh, this young student. He was just absolutely brilliant. And when I was looking for someone, um, he, he's, his name came to mind. And it was ironic because he contacted me when I was thinking of him in, in the ether. He, he contacted me on Facebook and said, um, you know, I'm doing a, an album. And, and then I said, wow, uh, great. Would you like to do my album? And we got together with songs written by myself and my brother. I got some uh, great musicians in, like the brass section from Madness. And, um, you know, just, just fantastic musicians that I've bumped into over the years. And I f- finally put an album together that I'm really happy with and that I can take on the road and um, call my own. It's as simple as that, really. Along with your lead singer, you also brought in a female singer. You have a nice ensemble of musicians. Tell us a little bit about them, and we'll go into some of the tracks. Well, the female singer is um, my reluctant wife, Siobhan, who... Um, it, the thing is, when I'm writing uh, songs, I, I, I hear harmonies and um, I just, you know, I'm kind of, instead of waiting to get a professional in, <laughs> I say to my wife, who's got the most stunning voice, I say, Siobhan, come here and just do me a favour and put some vocals on this track. So she would come into my studio, which is in the house, and um, lay down the vocals. And they're just so good, I just could never replace her. Um, and she does it. Uh, kind of anon- anonymously, really. She doesn't like that, the limelight. She's not. Um, she's not too keen on being up up front. But uh, she's got a beautiful voice, and uh, we'll have to see if I can prize her out of um, her shyness and get her to come and sing for the world. But we'll have to watch that space. But um, it, the other musicians are are just friends and acquaintances that I've known over the years, who are just superb musicians, you know, and we. They come along and, you know, I'd write the bass lines with my brother Nick and then we replace them with a real bass player. Um, and same with the guitars. It just it developed from there. It's, it's just a, it's a nice process. Very easy. With me is Woody Woodgate, best known as the drummer for Madness and Voice of the Beehive. He has a new solo album, In Your Mind. There is a bit of that ska madness influence in there, but I have to tell you, I noticed listening to the album... A lot of '70s pop influence in there. I mean, the really good yeah. stuff. I, I don't mean the I don't mean the uh, the silly stuff. I mean the really good, involved '70s pop, late '60s pop. When listening to Top Forty was actually cool. Well, I'm a great fan of um, Super Tramp. Um, for my sins, I do love bands like ELO, um, 10 CC. Uh, Paul McCartney and Wings. I mean, these are all the bands that I, I grew up with. Um, I, I love the guitar solos of um, Gilmore from Pink Floyd. I'm, you know, uh, I'm just a bit of a, you know, I, I saw all of these bands. You know, I saw Genesis and Queen and Supertramp live uh, in the 70s. And I lived uh, very close to a place called The Roundhouse in Chalk Farm. And I saw all of the up-and-coming bands, you know, Phil Collins, uh, Brand X, and um, there there was just loads of really fantastic music, Curved Air. (laughs) You know, I'm a kid of the 70s, and I'm, I just, I like, I like real good 70s music, you know. As you said, I'm I'm glad you said not the silly stuff, because the silly stuff, you know, we all know about. Right, right. But what? you know, the silly, the silly music of the 70s, but there's been <laughs> silly music from all, all, de- all decades. <laughs> well, the, se- the 70s were interesting for a lot of reasons, but also that's when FM radio became a little more popular. At that time, FM radio was the experimental radio. Nobody was listening to it, so they could play music that sounded great 
people just started migrating that way because there was something different than what was being played on regular mainstream hit radio, and it sounded so yeah. much better. Uh, you could do things yeah. with the stereo sound. Uh, you could experiment, like I said before. And that's where this timeless music from the 70s came about, and that's where it became popular. Yes, absolutely. There was, um, there was a, a, disc, a disc jockey or a DJ in, in England called Kenny Everett, who uh, played Bohemian Rhapsody um, by Queen and actually made it a single. Um, no one would play a track that was more than six minutes long as a single ever. And uh, it was uh, these the pioneering disc jockeys in the 70s that changed everything. It's very exciting. Chris Cordani here with Woody Woodgate on Revenge of the 80s Radio. The album is very well produced. We talked about the retro sound. Let's talk about some of the tracks. Talk about some of your favorite tracks or the ones that sort of stand out to you the most, Woody. Well, the album is in two parts, really. There's um, the more commercial uh, sound at the beginning of the album with tracks like In Your Mind, which is the title track of the album. And uh, there's a track called Something. They're very up. Um, and poppy, uh, you know, with, with big brass sounds. There's a track called um, Friday Night to Sunday Morning, which has a very kind of uh, madnessy sound. You know, it's got an offbeat guitar and uh, big brass again. But um, and I and I, I'm unapologetic about uh, doing that because I am in madness. You know, I've had 35 years of of uh, knowing how to craft a good pop song so I, I that's what i do but at the same time there are tracks like mother and shaman and uh, the very last track thank you but that lend themselves more to uh rock genre yeah. um, and um but I, I like that kind of music as well you know so there's a there's a little in there for everyone Interesting you mention that there are two parts to the album and a lot of the songs have the one aspect or the other. Right in the middle of that is We're All Going to Brighton, which kind of has a mix of the two, the pop flavor plus the rock flavor that you mentioned. We're All Going to Brighton reminds me of the Kinks early stuff. It's, uh, it's kind of got a, a good feel factor to it and um, it is kind of madnessy, <laughs> really, I suppose, with... Uh, it's a summer. It's a it's a it's a happy go lucky um, summer song. It's a feel good song. That's you know I'm I don't apologise for doing that either. You know it's um, it makes you feel good. Hopefully. Oh, I, I like to have a feel good radio show too. In fact, I've well, always that's good. <laughs> yeah, and, and in fact, I've always wanted to write the feel good movie of the summer. That's what I've always wanted to do. There we go. And another really sharp deviation from the album is a song you mentioned just a few moments ago, Shaman. It has an 80s synth intro to it. Yeah, um, I, I've always liked uh, kind of uh, fuzzy, you know, weird synth sounds. I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, a guitarist called Steve Hillage, who was in a band called Gong. He did some great albums, and on every track, there's some kind of synthy, blippy thing going on. And I, I, I it just... Uh, it reminded me a bit of uh, my brother Nick came up with a, a guitar riff and it reminded me of um, kind of Shine On You Crazy Diamond and uh, the uh, Wish You Were Here album. And uh, I just wanted it, uh, it was too much like that, you know, with the organ and the guitar. And I wanted to get it away, maybe go down my progressive rock influences. So, um, yeah, no, it's, I, I do have fun with, with, with uh, synths as well. I'm, I'm a bit of a, an old prog rocker at heart. And before we wind down, Woody, once again, how can our listeners learn more about Rethink Mental Illness? Yeah, Rethink Mental Illness uh, is, a, is a fantastic charity uh, who they help people with mental illness, uh, help them through their troubles and give them advice. They also help family members who have uh, got to live with people with mental problems. They, they're a support network um, and they give advice and they are just absolutely fantastic. And they bring awareness. They try and break down the barriers, the, uh, the stigma, uh, the, the false rumors about people with mental illness um, and try and bring education and awareness to, you know, us, uh, normal people who maybe uh, are scared of people with mental illness. They've got a great campaign that uh, encourages us to talk to people. You know, talking uh, is fantastic because you realise that 
people with mental illness are, in a sense, just, you know, normal people who are struggling like we are in, in life. And um, uh, we're much stronger when we talk. So it, it's a great charity and uh, something that's very close to my heart, obviously, because of my brother. And uh, that's it, really. Woody Woodgate, thank you once again for taking time with us today on Revenge of the 80s Radio. You can keep up with Woody on his website, woodywoodgate.co.uk. That's woodywoodgate.co.uk. Let's play a track from In Your Mind, Woody. In Your Mind, new from Woody Woodgate, the title track on Revenge of the 80s Radio.